I appreciate being invited here. Thank you so much. Um, I am an Orlando native, so this is a little bit of a drive for me, but I do work between Reunion and Hammock Beach, Reunion being in Kissimmee, which is in Orlando, and then of course Hammock Beach being here local in Palm Coast. So I do split my time between the two, uh, try to get up here as much as I can. I'm gonna make more of an effort to be more involved in events like this so that I can uh, network and meet a lot of you uh, more personally. So thank you again for having me. Uh, so again, leveraging public relations. Public relations are what I like to call pro now. It's kind of my new term, PR and social, uh, since they're so aligned um, to help grow your business. So um, PR is very uh, misunderstood still today. Um, a lot of people think it's advertising when they hear the word PR, um, but the biggest difference is that one is paid, one is earned. Placements and advertising are guaranteed, whereas in PR they are not. You usually have to uh, really leverage relationships and you have to hopefully persuade them to actually um, write the piece. Uh, so ads are very visual, where PR is all about storytelling. Um, we usually like to go on and on, spend a lot of time with the people to build that relationship and again, build that value. Ads tell you to buy something, uh, whereas PR tells some, has somebody tell you why you should buy that product. Uh, so you have a little bit of someone who vouches for your product. It's officially defined um, as a strategic communication process that builds uh, mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. So a little bit again about um, advertising versus publicity. Advertising is what you pay for. Publicity, they say, is what you pray for. So um, this is very true. Um, so this is a, a was a digital marketing trifecta of earned, paid, and owned media, known as POEM. Um, but now with social media growing so that, uh, rapidly, there's a, a new element called shared media. Um, so all of these areas should be used to be successful. Um, so a company should leverage each area. Um, paid attracts strangers that you might not know yet. Uh, owned attracts customers that you already have tapped into, whether it's through your databases, your website, different channels that you own. Um, and then earned editorial coverage attracts fans who become engaged with your, um, your brand and have see a value in it uh, and then can turn into customers. So how do you get earned media? And earned media up here is media relations, blogger relations, influencers are a huge, uh, huge area. Um, partnerships, community and charitable in, uh, initiatives, uh, and then of course all the social media uh, elements as well. So you do this by working with editors um, to experience your business. You can do this with influencers to have social, make it social impact, work with broadcast, radio and TV, absolutely, uh, and then develop um, promotions that you can align with certain brands that might um, be aligned of course with your business. Uh, so let's use an example. So this is one objective that I have uh, last year and this year. So all of you are familiar with what happened during Hurricane Matthew. Um, we were hit really hard. Hammock Beach especially was hit really hard. We have an oceanfront golf course. It turned into an oceanfront lake. Um, and it was devastating. I mean, that golf course was a signature golf design. So if you're not familiar with golf, that means that Jack Nicklaus, the famous golfer, came out and actually designed the course and said, this is what I want it to be like. He walked it and everything. So we could have slapped a Band-Aid on it, got it back up and running, and not had to wait 13 months to restore it to its original glory. But then what does that say to our, the people who we promote this product to? That we don't really care about its authenticity, we don't care that it was a signature design, um, that we just want to make money, right? Well, we took the hit, we took the 13-month restoration, and we designed it back to its original glory with Nicholas and his design company, and even made it better. We brought in an all new grass that's like top premium. It's everyone who came out and experienced it said that it was better than it was originally built. So that um, is an example of, you know, really keeping with your brand and making sure that you continue your promise. So for this, we had a few strategies to help maximize awareness of this and uh, reopen the, the ocean course. We used media relations, which is releases and custom pitches or creative story angles, like leveraging that the hurricane damaged us and then relaunching on the anniversary of the hurricane. Um, although we got pushed a little bit because of Irma. Um, but she didn't, she didn't hold us down. Because of all of our efforts, we were able to recover from Irma like that which is amazing. Um, so that also helped the story of, you know, you got hit with a second hurricane, what happens now? The grass that we put into place now helps us absorb salt water so it can thrive. So just all the different spins that you can have uh, to turn the negative into a positive. Because a lot of PR is crisis management and spinning a story so that your brand still looks uh, great in the eyes of the consumers. Um, media experiences, hosting individual stays in my world 
there's nothing better than that because that gives someone a hands-on experience. It allows them to experience it without you telling them what they're going to get. Um, and it's the only authentic way for people to, uh, to share their experience, for lack of a better word, um, with their audiences and to help you reach a, a, a deeper audience. You can also do group fans, which we do a lot. In this case, for the Ocean Course relaunch, we did exactly that. Um, and then blogger collaborations, which is huge. Again, influencers are everywhere right now. Everyone's an influencer. Um, broadcast features, again, I can't discount the, uh, the value of working with radio, TV, and then, of course, print. Um, and then co-branding alliances, uh, brand promotions. We obviously worked with Golf Week because that's a huge brand for us. Um, or Wilson, which is a, a, a product brand, and just trying to leverage those relationships. And then having uh, visibility at events and promotions like the PGA Show, which is a huge golf uh, showcase in Orlando every year, or leveraging things like Women's Golf Day and having events that tie in that. So just always being tapped into uh, the different areas. Um, if this will play, this is an example of a um, clip that we received as a result of those efforts that we put in. We got total through the weekend, um, 285 million impressions, which was $122,000 of earned media. So we did not pay $122,000 by inviting these people, hosting them, showing them the new product and telling them our story, we were able to receive uh, this much coverage and that much media value at, at no, val at no uh, investment. Um, the Golf Channel clip here alone had 200,000 uh, household reach and then 16,000 in earned media. Here we go. And the Jack Nicklaus Signature Design Ocean Course at Hammond Beach Resort in Palm Coast, Florida. It reopened on Thursday after a 13-month restoration project. Now the course, which features six holes on the Atlantic Ocean, is beautiful. It had been closed since October 2016 after high winds and storm surge from Hurricane Matthew had damaged the course. So the restoration included regrass in the fairways, greens, and rough with salt tolerance past column. But for more, Dan, over to you. So do you notice how she said restoration and not renovation? That is a PR spin because nobody likes the word renovation because it means something was broken or something was wrong. Thank you, Laura. Um, we specifically choose language in PR that helps your product look its best. Um, radio's the same, print's the same. We don't want to sell a bad product because what does that help us do? Uh, the client's not going to be happy with us if we, if we say something negative. They won't want to work with us. They won't want to spend their money with us. So we always try to choose the proper wording. Um, and that's why they have PR people usually in businesses to help spin it. Because otherwise, if, you don't, if you're not in PR, a lot of times you'll say something and not realize the possible repercussions that it might have. Um, other forms of editorial coverage is obviously print. Um, these are some examples of coverage that we've received. Various uh, publications, golf, meetings focused, family focused. So again, we don't just focus on one area. We really look at our audience and we tailor the messages to each audience um, and, and see how we can really make an impact on them. Um, for that event, we had over 200 local officials, club members, resort guests, and media in attendance. So it was, it was a big deal for us. So that was a, a full, um, all hands on, on deck. So the influencer impact, this is really important. So again, leveraging media stays, you can't beat a, an actual experience. This is a uh, blogger. This is something I'm really focusing on this year is really involving uh, influencers more in our, in our resort. So this is one example of someone who just stayed a couple, uh, last weekend, actually, Vintage and Grace, and then her husband has Vintage Gentleman. It probably doesn't sound familiar to anybody, but it is. She has a great following, 25,000 plus followers just on Instagram alone. Her, she's a photographer. I mean, they all are nowadays with these iPhones. So um, great social media content. She teases that she has a play-by-play -play on, uh, on the resort, on her blog. So she's tying in different mediums and ways for people to learn more about the experience. And this isn't her only uh, post that she made. This is just one that I grabbed. She, but she uses proper hashtags. She used geolocation. She has good following. Um, and then she's also tying in her personal branding, which is the looks and the, the clothing that she's wearing to kind of make it a multifaceted post. So it's not super salesy. It's more of here's my experience. We loved the lazy river and mommy spa time. Um, this could be you. This is another person. She is a fashion blogger. Not someone I would norm you would normally think, oh, let's you know, bring that to Hammock Beach or to a hotel. But she has a huge following. This post alone had 4,900 plus you know, likes on it. Um, she has 150,000 followers on 
Instagram alone. She's from New York. She's got, you know, that good household income following. I mean, so all she did was say living the good life at Hammock Beach, and that makes a good impact on over almost 5,000 people. So um, this is another example. Plus, again, good content that we could repost for future. Todd Lewis with Golf Channel. He is a uh, credible source and people listen to him and, and care about what he says. 24,000 followers on Twitter and he posted about our ocean course relaunch since the hurricane saying it's in spectacular shape, challenging but fair. In his opinion, one of the best courses in Florida. You can't get better than that. We did not have to pay him to do that. He just came out and posted it. Amazing. Another example, this is a golf influencer who had 2,300 plus likes saying, you know, beautiful photo that, again, we can use for potential advertising purposes, sharing, you know, the hashtags and the, the geotags and everything like that. Again, someone who just wanted to play, to share his experience, and his following cares about he, what he says. So they're going to hopefully come out and experience that. Same with, thing with Dapper Drive. We did not ask him to say these things, but he gives his own review of, of his account of his experience. Um, so, and then full insights on the experience on his blog. So tapping into that multimedia uh, opportunity. Last one, just to show the different types of uh, influencers that we host. This one's more family travel, so 1,500 plus likes, style me blonde. Again, not someone you wouldn't necessarily think, let's go for, but you have to find these different influencers who have an engaged audience that are going to actually turn into customers. So if you just find an influencer with 150,000 you know, followers, but all they do is they're a chihuahua stylist, believe it or not, I've gotten that, um, that might not be the right influencer for you to host. So you have to kind of look into these people. Everyone can say they're an influencer, but you want to make sure that they're the right influencer for you. And again, get all this content because there's nothing better. This is one of my favorite, actually. This is a bride who got married at our resort. She's now partnering with Wedding Wire to share her How We Wed moment. Wedding Wire is huge, has a huge following. She already has a good following, as you can see, 125 likes, and she has 25,000 plus followers. Um, and then she's gonna share her entire experience, which will hopefully turn into people wanting to book at our resort, which is a revenue generating opportunity. So at the end of the day, yes, PR is, and social is very visual, but it does tie into making money, because that's the end goal for everyone, right? Um, can't forget broadcast here, absolutely. Radio and TV are huge for us. We um, hit our local market. Um, sorry that I didn't include our very hyper-local market. Kirk, Kirk will be very upset with me for not. He's going he's gonna to text me after this, isn't he? Um, but this is just an example of, actually, this was a Q4, I think, of last year. I'm not sure. But um, this was an example of kind of the impact that working through promotions can have. So these are trip a day giveaways. All we did was like a $700 valued giveaway for a guest uh, or a radio listener to win. Um, for Hammock General, Mother's Day and Father's Day, you can see those values. We did not pay that amount of money. <laughs> Laura can tell you how much these would cost. Um, but we reached over 500 plus thousand people for $700 investment, which is nothing for, the, for what you get out of it. Um, another really good way to market and promote your business is to apply for awards. Reader's Choice Award, you can't beat things like that. Best Resort in Florida, Greens of Distinction, Lodging um, Awards. I mean, that's a, a free way to get people to, to see the value and to have credibility for your business. So really quickly, I know I'm probably going over because of PR, I can talk for hours. But this is something I want to talk about, power of UGC. UGC is user-generated content, and it's very valuable because it is people taking photos for you that you don't have to pay a photographer for that are probably going to be better than what you might even take anyways because they're very experiential. People enjoy you know, capturing these experiences and then um, sharing them with the, the company. So these are all kind of examples of UGC that we received and were able to use on our social media. So again, it shows the experience versus us saying, buy this, come here. Um, the last thing about employee advocacy that I put on there that I didn't mention, though, is your employees are huge, um, can be huge advocates for you. You might have 10,000 followers on social media, but you're only going to reach that 10,000 following um, if you just post on your own channels. If you leverage your employees, say you have 1,000 who have 1,000 followers each, they're going to have a huge reach if you, if you leverage them as brand ambassadors. So definitely incentivize them to become your brand ambassadors. Um, my last slide wraps everything up. Um, so you have to create key messages, define and dif differentiate your product, basically put together an elevator pitch so that people know why you're different. For Re Hammock Beach, it's signature golf, um, oceanfront holes, all-suite resort, and oceanfront playground. Those are kind of our keywords. 
Um, identify a spokesperson uh, who can kind of speak to the value of the resort. They're going to be your go-to media person. Usually that's myself or a gen general manager of the resort. Keep your website current, updated, user-friendly, have great imagery. More images than, than text is, is very valuable. Um, and then highlight your accomplishments with news and events. Um, bulk up your social presence. That is huge right now. Stay active, create relevant content, user-generated content. It's huge, it's free, you don't have to think about it, you just post it. Um, let people tell the story for you. Familiarize yourself with key media, be active, um, know their beat before you pitch them. No one hates it more than if you go and say, hey, I'm uh, gonna pitch you golf and they write about family travel. It <laughs> has nothing to do with them, so they're never gonna wanna work with you again because they know that you don't care. And then be visible, attend industry network events, join industry specific associations, um, and get involved in the community. Never be afraid to ask for help. PR agencies are amazing tools if you need them. We have one. And then of course, never forget your audience because if you get too distracted by what you want and you forget what they want, um, you'll lose your audience because they won't be as engaged. So that's it. So I would now like to invite all of the speakers up to the front.